There we go. Okay, so uh, I'm going to walk you guys uh, through sketching this cityscape, this simple one. And, uh, and then once we get the sketch in, you have, uh, I'll show you some, I'm going to make some suggestions for you, whether regardless of whether you're using oil or acrylic. Um, but uh, I'll, I'm going to give you some leeway in color choices because actually the colors of this don't like knock my socks off. I think the composition is better. I like the composition. Uh, so, uh, so we're going to use it as a basis to create our paintings, but you guys are going to start, you guys are going to kind of make decisions along the way about your top colors and kind of how much detail you want in there. Um, so we will start with this. I'm going to send this across because it's much lighter here. So everybody know what a vanishing point is? Yep. Yeah. Okay. So a single vanishing point, right? This means that as this road meets in a certain area, as these two points meet, that's your eye level horizon, right? And uh, in this particular, and, and all of these lines should kind of feed to this single point. Um, they do not exactly. So we'll talk about that, but that's how it should be here. Hold on, sorry. Talking and WhatsApping at the same time is really hard. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. These colors are terrible, but they just don't get me. They don't get me really excited. So I thought this would be a good one. So there's your vanishing point. It's a little bit because we're standing so close. It's kind of at the top of rather than at the base here, right? Um, where this background is kind of sort of where the cars, the bottom the window meets. Okay, what's that noise? <laughs> I hear scratching. All right, never mind. Um, so I don't think it's me. I'm pretty <laughs> sure it's not me. Yeah. I'm gonna mute just in case. Okay. One, two. And uh, the other thing we're doing, we're not gonna be gridding this time because this is a fairly simple composition. I'm, I'm trying to move everybody actually away from gridding. So what I'm doing, if you can see here, is I'm kind of counting one, I got one, two, three, really it's kind of like three and a half lengths from the front of the picture to the vanishing point. We can divide this into one, two, three and a half lengths. So when you kind of create your and your vanishing point, another thing I want to show you is exactly the center. That's interesting it is. So this car is actually exactly in the center. So if you were to mark, kind of put a little mark here where this point would be, if you're guessing, you would need one, two, at least two more lengths up to the top, right? That would kind of cut you off here. Or you could bring it up a little bit further, have more tree. So I'm not gonna have a little bit more, I'm gonna have a little bit more. Come down a little bit. But how did you decide where to put that dot on the on the I'm canvas itself? Based on how much, how many spaces I can fit, I'm deciding when I by looking at this and deciding. Oh, okay, okay. Right. So I'm kind of fiddling around with it a little bit till I get it kind of similar to what's happening on the paper. Two, three. Yeah, that's right. And it really is exactly, this point is exactly in the center. Also not a phenomenal, this is not in the center, so let me just cover it a bit. Not phenomenal compositionally, but I think it'll, I think what this exercise is gonna do is really get your, your decision making about cityscapes kind of in line. Uh, ultimately, I'd like you guys to photograph your own and paint it in class. That's kind of my goal for you. 
And then I can see that down here, this line kind of starts here. And this line, don't bring that down here. This line kind of starts up here. Oops. I don't know why everything's looking so, there we go. This should be looking way more. Ah. For some reason. Does it matter what, does it matter what um, sized canvas you're using, Leah? What's that? I'm just wondering if it matters what size canvas you're using or, or paper. Uh, not as long as it's kind of is rectangular and you're basically using proportion me measurements. Okay. Really. What size are you using? I'm using a small one, probably about eight by 10, maybe a little bit bigger. I'm in centimeters. I'm about 25 wide by just over 30 long. That's perfect. That's perfect. That's a great size. Um, This is like 21 and a half, and this is like 30, 28. So 25, but yeah, that's about like, yeah, that should be good. And it's a good, like, even size. Are we talking inches? No, I'm talking centimeters. Shoot. <laughs> okay. Measurements are not really important. Those kind of measurements are not really okay. important. All right. <laughs> And then I want you to look up here because you can see that the first thing I'm doing is sketching in that road. I'm just using my, I'm not using my ruler to measure. I'm using it actually literally as a straight edge. Here, this. So this comes down and notice this side of the street really comes up. And we've got a bit of car below and a bit of car above. I probably just want to block that off. One, two. So you have more car below than you do above. This is not a half and half transition. If you look really closely, you'll see that this distance is shorter and this distance is longer. Of like a backwards oh, okay. stop that. Stop that. <laughs> um, it's kind of like a backwards S. If you want to draw it that way. It's like I'm not really sketching the car. I'm just kind of trying to get those shapes in there so that when I do get into the car. Car shapes are tricky. We're going to leave that. And you might just decide to skip it. That's how nice I'm feeling today. <laughs> I might let you skip everything. Um, and then, hang on just a second. I'm going to sketch in all these. I need to have this by me so I can actually see what I'm doing here, sort of working around the camera. And then basically all of the angled lines that are above this line are gonna come towards that same vanishing point. So what do I mean by that? I mean this. Right? So ignore this. If you can see this here, these lines, all of these lines that are on the side going like that, all of them are going to end here. That means this one. So what you can see is as I start to sketch this, let me use another 
thing so you can really see what's going on here. You'll see that that doesn't, some of these angles look steeper. But I believe that's camera distortion. So you can see here, I'll show you in a second. And so I'm gonna ask you to correct for it. So when you do, for example, something skinnier that will show up. So for example, you'll see here, there we go. So you can see this doesn't exactly right line up with this line, but that is actually probably where the line is. I believe this is camera distortion. So you're going to fix that <laughs> is what's going to happen. I'm going to have you guys fix that. Yep. There. Remember, you all said you wanted to do city skits. <laughs> They're hard. This is the sort of tedious nature of a cityscape. It's really tedious. I, I won't lie to you. There's some very tediousness. There's some real tediousness to it. But I don't know, Leah. Now I'm like, you have me in a mental quandary of where I'm going to take you when you come to New York. Yay. Because I'm wondering if you want to do a cityscape. I do want to do a cityscape. Or more of like a New York landmark. No, no, but, no. Um, cityscape. cityscape. You want a cityscape? Right. I'm going painting with a local painter. Um, actually, I really, really seriously admire. Uh, his name is David Nakabayashi. Right. And um, real nice guy. And we're going painting together in Times Square on Wednesday. So I'm going to see how that goes. I might throw you into Times Square, Leah, but I also might not. I might say, hey, let's go to like Park Avenue or somewhere. I'm going to have to figure out if you want, if you want a cityscape, I'm going to have to find a, a good place for us. I want cityscapes. I want cityscapes. Okay. So give you time to figure out. So girls, if you can see this, you can see, so in this particular case, you'll see a couple windows that kind of narrow down a little bit lower. Um, you're either going to leave those out or you're going to kind of, I'm going to have, you know, you might have, I'm going to have you correct them up. The only thing that's confusing is that this car is kind of, this is kind of a blocked off, not like we can see a natural horizon, right? Because it's, there's no place where land meets sea or, you know, Scott, land meets sky. Um, so everything that's above, everything that angles here, above, you're gonna be, is that that's above here. So for example, these windows is gonna kind of, it's gonna end here at the vanishing point, it's gonna go out here. So window number one will be probably here. And window number two will be here. Got it? It's the same here. I'm not sure how you came up with where to put your ruler though. I started here. Right. Then I line it up kind of here. So I can see it's slightly angled up, but not very much. See, everything starts here and then it angles either up or down. If you want to, you can put a little edge here where that line stops. But you'll see if I put my, 
watch this. Pat. If I put this straight, then there's no angle. If I put it down, it angles up. So I know it slightly angles down because I've drawn a line from the edge of the bottom of the windows to here. So now I know I need to mimic this line as I'm coming back up. I need to mimic the slant of this line. I'm going to do the same with the top of the windows. So as you can see here, I drew from this central vanishing point a line that angled up to cover the top edges of the windows. You can see it, it's right here. So if I line my ruler up, I start it at the vanishing point and I run a line straight across. You can see that the top of the windows, the top of each window as it slants down lines up with this line. So that's what I'm doing. And if you haven't taken any vanishing point lessons, I'm going to recommend you go back to the very beginning and listen to Jessica's lecture. And then there are about four drawing lessons where I very specifically talk about drawing angles like this. So it, it's definitely worth reviewing. Um, uh, there's a lot of information about it, but that's how that decision is being made. Does that answer your question? Yes. Okay. Leah? Yeah. Can I be rude and jump in for just a second? Yeah, jump in. It might be helpful if you draw the horizon line so people can see ah. it relative to where you're angling up. Yes, across. Great idea. Let me do that. Sorry. Yep, no, you're right. It's just a gap. Like, I know, like, you and I would fill that in, and anybody who's experienced will fill it in, but I'm seeing, like, I'm hearing that people are asking questions that they're not seeing. It's just a gap. All right. I think that that will close that gap. Right. All right. So here is the horizon line. See that orange line? So everything that comes above this horizon line is going to kind of slant down and come to this central point. Everything that's below the horizon point is going to slant up and come to this central point. Does that make more sense? Is that easier to see? Thank you, Jessica. Yeah. Yeah. That's how it works. You will see that if you're actually to look specifically at this picture, that's not always what's happening. The angles, some of the angles are wonky, but that is a distortion problem from the photograph, which is why people can tell when you drew some, draw something from photographs. So we are going to correct that. So it doesn't look like we're drawing from a photograph. We're going to actually correct the photograph. But this is an interesting place where you can really see camera distortion at work. All right, so here's a picture of that photo uh, with the horizon line across. So it's a little bit easier to see. I know it's a little tricky to see here because things are a little bit dark, but. You had a lighter black and white that you sent over. No, it's just how it looks. It's the same black and white. It just looks like it. Oh, OK. It's just easier to see on the lighter one. Um, yeah, I, I mean, this is the same photograph that I just. I Isn't that funny? It's just uh, my lighting, I'm trying to get my lighting to work and uh, it's always a challenge. So it's the it's partly the nature of the camera, which isn't very good. Um, that's why I always send you pictures. And here it is with the picture, the horizon line identified across. There we go. Okay. So yeah, you can see this kind of little rainbow constellation of um, lines. Actually, if I want, I can sometimes measure so in this particular case, to figure out where this line starts, which is the top of the windows, I can actually measure this and compare it to the horizon line. You can draw the horizon line if you want to. Lately. Here's my horizon line. So I can take this distance from here to here. I can see that these are about the same. 
as I sketch this in. Hi girls, Los Angeles is joining you. Los Angeles in the house. Hi Diana. Los Angeles is joining you. <laughs> Los Hi Angeles. Diana. Okay, how are you? Awesome. So before we'll sketch these in, I'm, I'm gonna take a look at your lines. And if you're having trouble trying to figure out where to start or end something, let me know. I will. How's Los Angeles doing? Oh, wow. All the way up there to the center. All right. Yeah, so you should have this funny kind of sundial thing happening. I'll send you mine so you can take a look at this will give you an idea of where to start and end your lines. Notice um, the sides of the picture or the canvas where where things end on the edges to help you kind of locate where things need to go. But if you haven't done any perspective work, we do have a lot of it on recording and it is excellent to go over, like seriously, uh, super helpful. Um, Jessica's lectures are helpful, and then I try to reinforce them in a series of pretty much every drawing lesson after that. So there's a lot of drawing lessons. I might even put them together in a package and send them to you of links so you guys can follow them if you want to. It's like super helpful. One on the page. So as so ladies, as you get to this point, show me where you're at and then I'll um, help you get these placed and then we'll do, do the next step, which are the verticals. Leah, did you get your electric eraser? Not yet. <laughs> no! It's been a money's been all right in the house. <laughs> so I'll so oh. get there, but like I everything has to be anyway. There's a layer of things that has to happen before I can do it, but it's on the list. It's on the list of things. It's funny. I think I really get that though. I get that. I'm like, you know I have no money. I have yeah. like nothing. Yeah. Ridiculous. Right. You have a teenage daughter. I mean, it's absurd. Like, I don't know why anybody you, has kids has any money at all. <laughs> I don't. I don't at all. But you know what? The New York City DOE gave everybody who has a kid in public school a food stamp card. Oh, that's awesome. Oh, nice. It actually really is. So, and they refilled it this summer because, you know, they, they did it like once, like earlier this year. And then they refilled it this summer. And I'm like, this is great. Amazing. And it's something like something like $400. So oh. I've already done two Costco runs yeah. on this thing. Are you and then I went to the grocery store today. And I said, I don't know if this is going to work because I did two Costco runs. I didn't think so. I think they refilled it like again, again, because she's like, oh no, your balance is down here. She's like $300 on the card. Do you know how much this helps? I have no shame. If they want to give me food stamps, I'll take them. Okay, so Pat, one of the things Great. I want to 
Well, yes, that is awesome. Okay, so Pat, one of the things I want you to take a look at is the difference between where the lines start and end on this side and on this side. So I actually, this, this line is confusing. I want you to ignore this line. Um, we're going up to the top here. We're, unless you're just going to stick here in this, so you're going to skip everything that's up here. But if no, you're, I was just putting in there what you put. No, yeah, basically, I want you to look at the difference between where the lines start on the right side. So take a look at where the lines start on the right side. My, we have done a. Oh it's, oh, it's all the way to the top. Okay. And it doesn't come all the way right. So these aren't equal sides. This is my point. Oh, okay. Right. So I want you to pay more attention. Oh. To that. It's not like this side is the same as this side. This one. I think I was trying to be a Libra there. I think you're just, I think it's, I think you're just doing what left frame, what the left frame wants you to do, which is to create a pattern when there isn't one. As you know. I think I was trying to find, find a balance between yeah. the two. So Nina, if you're just getting started, you need to sketch out your horizon line here. And you want to, I don't, you want to kind of basically draw these lines that I've got going here. Okay. And, and I'm, I'm not going to explain again what happened. Uh, we'll talk about it as we're going through. It's just because it was actually about, you know, 20 minutes or so of that. So you don't want to hear that again. But I will. No, that's fine. I'll send you my sketch. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Julia, let's see. So Julia, I think this line here goes up higher. A little bit. Yeah. Just put another one into the corner. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This one comes here. This doesn't come all the way to the corner. It comes down to about here. Here, hold on. I know it's a little hard to see. So let me put my thing up here. If you look here, you'll see that this ends here and then here's the ending. And on this side, it ends in the corner. And here, that looks pretty good. That looks pretty good. Yep, these look pretty good. I mean, you can see Julia's already added in her, her windows. So, Pat, I feel like yours was pretty good. So our next step here is to add our vertical lines. I'm gonna draw these here so that you can see them. Let's take a different colored pencil. Let's see what I have. Oh, I can have a yellow here somewhere. Oh, here's a white, even better. Okay, so our verticals really are straight up and down. They aren't angled in any way. They are literally straight up and down, which means that if I measure the starting point from this side, it's exactly the same as the starting point on the bottom. There's no tilting or leaning. You know who I'm talking about. <laughs> here, these are <laughs> Absolutely, straight up and down lines, right? So as we delineate um, several things, we delineate, delineate the edges of buildings. Right, like this, we're gonna be drawing vertical lines. So I'm drawing along the edge of that pipe right now. Now I'm drawing the straight up and down edge of the building. This is still not easy to see. Uh, let's try that. Let's try it and see if this will work better. All right, can you see that? And it's the same with the windows. So while the windows are slanted on the top and the bottom, right, they are not equally, they're not equal, they're not perpendicular. These lines are perpendicular. No, parallel. They are parallel. They go exactly up and down. 
remember that as the windows get farther away from you, the spaces between them get a little smaller. So although these are parallel, this will get a little bit smaller. Here we go. Right? And then also, let's see, here's like a big one. It's kind of dark. It's a, something jutting out here. I don't even know what it is. Just gonna sketch it. It's like part of the doorway. Some here. These go straight down. These go straight down. These do not bend. They are straight down. Right? All of those, oh yes, and then the most important ones are here. This little box at the end where we can see the kind of back wall. Straight down here. What's kind of neat about this composition is that there's a tree in the way. So at about here, we have this tree that we can kind of bring in the shape of. So like I said, you guys are going to have a lot of, you're going to have a lot of leeway here to add as much as you want of the detail. But I do want to, like, I love this little graffiti sketch here. I like this pole here. There's a fence. And by the way, that angle will also come to the same vanishing point. Right? So every time you've got top and bottom, they're all going to come to this single vanishing point in the middle of this car. And every time you've got verticals, they're going to go straight up and down. As tedious as this sounds, it's way less tedious than trying to figure out each angle. <laughs> Understanding the vanishing point is a really wonderful way to work. It saves so much time. I'm going to take a picture of this so you can see, you guys can see some of the verticals. Lee, I sent mine as well in case it's, the lines are okay at the start. All right. So, yes, problem. The first problem is that you have brought your horizon line way too high up. If you can see here, so the horizon line is here. Yeah. Okay. And where is it? Is it at the half? Is it nearly at the halfway point of the paper? No, it's about a third. Yeah. So measure where yours is, and you'll see yours is almost halfway up your paper. So you want to bring that horizon line down to about a third. It is actually about a third. It is not. I'm looking at it. Uh, I measured it. It's oh, less measured wrong. You measured wrong. So recheck that measurement. It is not a third. It's not even close. I can tell just by looking at it. Oh, really? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> no, I'm trying to do it with a, what, what do you call it? Like a ruler? Honey, and... no, you're, you're wrong. It's not right. You're, oh, okay. Just look, just look here. Oh, wait, you can't see. I but, can't see it, sorry. Well, you need to measure. Take your finger and go from here to here, go from here to the vanishing point. Right? Okay. And here's the horizon line. And you go up, you'll be almost halfway up the paper. It's just, no. Your measurements are not right there. 20. Okay. Um, so remeasure them. Okay, I'll redo it. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, just bring it down. You need to bring it down to one third. That's where we'll start. And then I'll take a look at it again. Which means, of course, that all of your lines will, well, just, yeah. 
Uh, it's better to redo it, I think. Sorry, I was late. It's hard in the summer. Yeah, I thought, oh, I'm going to be yeah. late, but I'm like, I want to join. So, yeah. yeah. Sorry, I want you to join too, but I'm just, uh, I see why you, yep, this is problematic. So, maybe. well, I've measured it with a ruler and it's about, it's it's not a third. It's not even, a, it, it's about two inches off. That's a lot of, that's a lot of real. It will show a difference. Yeah, you're right. It's a massive yeah. difference. Listen, a millimeter shows a difference. So two inches is is like you you missed is like striking out. <laughs> like, yeah. Um, I, one of these days, as you continue to practice this, you will get a sense, uh, Nina, for the two dimensional space. But as a beginner, um, as you're starting to learn to evaluate, see, I can tell just by looking because I've been doing it often enough. I can tell like that you just have way too much space here. Um, so, uh, I would find your point here before you draw your lines out from here and here. Okay. I think what confused you is your lines from here and here on either side. So find your horizon line down at the third point here, and then draw out these bottom lines from here. And that okay. will help. Thank you. Welcome. Uh, Julia, that looks pretty good. So yeah, just keep, but now we're gonna start adding in. So now we're just gonna start adding in these vertical lines. You can start kind of where, I'm going to start here on the side. Right. Um, you can see that number one, number one is here. I can tell that my building got a building there. Yeah, and uh, you guys officially have permission to simplify this as much as you want as we're going along. When you start to feel like you have enough city detail, um, you're welcome to stop drawing and start painting. So right now it's just a lot of vertical lines. You can erase the areas that you know go past where the street ends, for example.
so many angles. <laughs> so many straight lines, so many angles. I'm not expecting you to draw every brick. I'm expecting you to see more lights and darks. So there's a nice light dark space between here and here. Oh. And anything that's kind of sticking horizontally out. So the only thing that's really at an angle are the things that are on the sides. Verticals are still the same. So is, is for example, this wall is horizontal, straight horizontal. So you'll see little lines here. When we get to them, I'll show you a couple. Here, hold on. There's a wall here. I don't think you will see it. Oh, that's actually a little bit better. Okay, it's like kind of a pipe here. Okay, Leah, I think I I think it's better. <laughs> Send it over. Okay, it's over. It's over. It's oh, over. over. Okay, let's see. Oh yeah, much better. Two, yeah. three. Yeah, it's about a third. It's still a little high, but I think it'll work. So you're gonna end your composition around here, Nina. Probably. You won't get the top of this tree. So you wanna ignore everything up there. This okay. is one, two, three. See that? Okay. So composition, if you want to get things in place, you'll just ignore everything that's up there. Those, the rest of you will add in this element. All right, right kind of around the edge of the car on this side. This is a kind of important line. And on this side, here. So as you do the tops, so you can see these four horizontal lines that I'm sketching in now, which is basically here. 
these are straight horizontal lines, just like your, what can I call it? Your horizon line, right? These are straight across. These lines are straight across. The windows here. You can start sketching in my car. Window. Good. It's a little hard to see, so I'll I'll get you guys a new picture once we've got the sketching. Yes, Jessica, I want cityscapes. Times Square scares me just a little, so that might be a good one. Times Square kind of scares me too, but I think I'll be good with David. Do you know, I've never painted in Times Square before. Really? Well, because you Yeah. Or maybe it's like- I know, it's like, like real personal for me now though, because, you know, we moved downtown, the office moved downtown, but I worked in Times Square for 15 years. You guys are so, no have, oh, right, you're no longer- And I've never painted in Times Square, like ever. It's very different now. It feels totally different. Like the city, like Times Square in particular, it just feels totally different. I don't think I'm going to take you to Times. I've painted like above Times Square, like looking kind of down into it, but more in like the 50s. Right. Not like in the middle of Times Square. You know, Leah, I might take you down to the Lower East Side. <gasps> yes, please. I think maybe I'm going to do that because people there are like real like quirky and weird. And I and the architecture is very nice. I think I'm going to take you to the Lower East Side. Okay. That's where we're going to go. Anybody who's in New York can come with us. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's open invitation. Absolutely open invitation. Um, yeah. Yeah, we're going to do it. It's going to happen, Leah. I'll take you out. It'll be nice. It'll be good. I'm totally excited. Or if you want bridges. I'll take you to Roosevelt Island. You no, know, I would love to do the Roosevelt Island Bridge. I feel like that's not, yes. So it's that. kind of up to you. If you want water and bridges, Roosevelt Island is fantastic. Right. Um, but if you want like pure cityscape and the total chaos and nonsense, we can do the Lower East Side. Or if you want more of like the, New York City, like Midtown thing, we could probably camp out on Park Avenue in one of the meridians. Oh, that's I don't think anybody would bother us. We could do that. The Lower East Side is real fun though, because the locals are very colorful. So you would, I know you are already, but you'd like have to be okay with that. Um, Cause they will come over and, you know, it's very different than tourists. But they're all very accepting. Like they're they're so cool. New York City is a great place to paint, and you'll have so much fun. Really wonderful. Hey Leah. Yeah. You know how when you choose a subject, you like the subjects that have got like a uh, very strong lights, like uh, stark lights and dark. Yes. Why is that? What do you mean? I'm sorry. I mean, what is it that you enjoy painting about subjects like that? I mean, what is it that- Farm lines like this? You mean a For city? instance? Um, I just like cities. I like light. Oh, no, no, I don't mean cities. Oh. I mean, any subjects, like when you chose a turtle, you chose a turtle, but I'd like strong lights and strong darks. Oh, that's just a classic art thing. Every artist does that. You want- So, can I elaborate? Oh, yeah. can I be a pain in the ass and elaborate sure. on that? Sure, sure. So Sandra, 
to answer your question, that's Sandra, right? Not Diana. Yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah. So <clears throat> the, the Swedish and the French accent is so alike, right? <laughs> no, I know you're Diana. Okay. So Sandra, um, the reason for that is because sometimes paintings are about a subject matter, but more often they're about light. paintings are about the pattern of light and dark. And that pattern has to do with the design. So Leah, for example, in this particular photograph, and I think Leah, you do it intuitively just already because you're a good painter and you, you have a good sense of design. Um, it's all about the design of light and dark. And that's why often people will break paintings down into two values or three because you can really see the patterns of light and dark. And a good painting is always not actually about the subject matter. It's about the pattern of light and dark. And that's the reason for it. Does that make sense? If you think, uh -huh. about, if you think about it, we are creating the illusion of depth on a mm -hmm. flat surface. We have only three things that we can do to do that. One is to show light areas versus dark areas because light areas show something turning towards the light and dark areas show something turning away from light. The other thing we have is shape and mark making. So shapes, getting the shapes right. So right now everybody's working very hard to get the shapes right. But the truth is, if we don't have light, we can't show and dark. If we don't have strong light and dark contrast, we can't show depth. You need it to show depth. Yeah. And it's also about the design and where you lead the eye around the painting and what you want to say. And right. the way you do that is through the values. Value is king. Like it's, because, it's more uh, important than anything else. Yeah. Presumably, if you have stark contrast, it just allows you to have strong values, right? Yes. I mean, a, a big contrast yes. in values. And in fact, yes, but it's the design and the shape of it. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, but the yeah. reason I'm asking is because I'm doing uh, a friend's cat. That's a free commission, and the picture that at first uh, struck me as easiest was this. Mm -hmm. Although yeah. the light is not that great, but yeah. but I'm being I'm doing this. But you see, this is like the the light is and dark is very strong here. Hold on, I'm Sandra. This. Show the first one again. I missed it. Show the first one. Show them side by the side if you can. But it's artificial light, which is what I don't like. But for, to me, this is much easier to paint. But it's artificial light. Uh -huh. And there is no like, uh, but here. Contrast. It's the second not, one will make a better painting. The yeah, second one is a better painting. Will make a better, strong light contrast mm -hmm. and makes a better painting. And that's- Sandra, there's an artist I want you to look at. Um, you're on Instagram, right? I yep. think I follow you. What's your name on Instagram? I'm going to send you something. I think it's Sanmar, S-A-N-M-A-L-E. Okay, write this down. If you, you know what, I'm going to actually put it in the chat. Anybody who's interested in animal portraits. And I need to um, talk to Pat about something too. So let me get back into this. Because Pat, this is mostly pretty good. But I wanted you to see one thing. Um, so what... Uh, uh, Pat, what you didn't do with your, the only problem here, everything else is looking, well, okay, there's a couple of things that are a little bit off, and I'm going to show you, you know what, I think it's going to be, you, you go ahead and give it to her. Pat, I'm going to print this out and draw it, show you where it's off, it's easier than trying to explain it. You could, you could actually edit it, uh, edit the photo and send it back. Well, I, yeah, but I don't know if I can draw the line. I don't know if I can draw okay. the line straight enough. Um, I mean, I can try, but I'll have to save it and then I have to, let me see. I have to pull it out of WhatsApp and then do, and then put it into an editing program. So give me a second. Some things Sandra, I put something in the chat for you. Oh, thank you. Oh, that's easy. That's general. No, really look at her. Look at her. She's absolutely incredible. Thank you. Okay. Of course. Also, Sandra, I want to tell you, you look really good. Uh, <laughs> good <idea. laughs> Thank you. You, you. you look good. I mean, you always look good, but I can tell like 
She's cancer free, baby. Yeah, like you really look good. And I want to tell you that you have a nice glow. Uh, thank you. I don't, uh, I don't look quite the way I'd like to look yet, but it's so much better. And it's no, but so you, you look good. good. Yeah. You, you really do. Thank you. Sandra kicked Cancer's ass. Sandra kicked. Yeah, she's a fucking superhero. Yeah. It's amazing to actually uh, know that you're on a path where you get better every day. Because most of the time, yeah. you're just on a normal path where you're sort of aging slowly or whatever. Right. And I was suddenly on a path where I was getting worse every day. But now, it's like, I now just this thought of getting better every day is pretty amazing. You're That's amazing, Sandra. You really are amazing. Very kind. Yeah, Pat, I can't figure out how to edit this quickly enough in the in the phone. So I'm going to have to print it. I'll be right back. OK. Um, you're almost there, but you're missing in in a couple of your in a couple of your diagonals. I'll okay. show you what we mean by that. I'm over here now. Anyway, sorry, Sandra. I am gonna remove. We don't have to be staring at you all the time. <laughs> oh, sorry. I didn't realize you were because I was some looking. People like it. Some people don't like it. <laughs> Uh, she's an oil paint painter, isn't she, Jessica? She's Jenna. a what? She's an oil painter. Or yes, but it doesn't matter. No, she does oils and she's classically trained. She basically only does animal portraits, but it doesn't matter. You can it looks still very see the concept of how she does because it's the classically trained light and shadow. Like, look at the light and shadow in her pet yeah, portraits. Looking at... Can you, can you put that in the in the thread? It's, it's in, the, in the, chat. the chat. It's in the chat in, in Zoom. Oh, we have to go to her Instagram account. Mm -hmm. She's well I worth following. She's wonderful. I don't absolutely think wonderful. You. Oh, there it's the... I don't think some of us know how to get to her Instagram chat. Hmm. Oh. You have to, find, um, if you're on Instagram, you have to, actually, you don't need to be on Instagram. You just need to go to Instagram.com. Yeah. Uh, no, I know about Instagram. I just don't know who Sandra is on Instagram. No, no, it's not Sandra. You, you'll be looking. So go to, okay. I can't, I got to print this. <laughs> so, okay. <laughs> it's okay. If you're on Instagram, the username is Jen underscore art. Oh, okay. That's easy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's easy. She's wonderful. She's classically trained, but she only does animal portraits. And you can see oh, yeah. how she uses value, meaning how light or dark something is and the pattern of value to make everything stand out. So even though her style might be different than what you're doing, which is totally fine, you can still like analyze it from that value perspective. And then yes. work in your own style and do your own voice, but still see what like I mean, how the values play out. Mm -hmm. Yes, what I mean is that you know the light in uh, watercolor is very different because you leave the white of a paper. So it looks well, that's different. true. So the workflow in watercolor is different, but your values and paying attention to the values is the same. Because what makes a watercolor value structure good is the same thing that makes an oil painting value structure good. It's all about value structure. That's what it is. So yes, you're right, Sandra. If you're working light to dark, you build it differently. You think about it differently in the painting process, but the structure, the end result of that structure is, is the same. It works the same in all across all mediums. Thank you. Mm, she's good, right? She does beautiful work. I love her stuff. You'll just see after a while. Like I said, it's the limits of the medium. Really show, hang on. Oh, come on. Really show. 
So while Leah is still printing, here's a fun cat video for you. Cat, so I'm gonna show you. Let's see. Mm, he's, Look at this cat, everybody. Look at this cat. A lot of Bengals do have to drink out of a tap. Yeah, but the cat's not actually getting any water. Look at it. <laughs> that is true. <laughs> Must be very frustrating. <laughs> I'm sorry. I find this hilarious. All right. So, Pat, here's what's going on. If you, oops, hold on. Let me look up here to see if you can see what I see. So, Pat, you ready? Yep. All right. So, uh, you have some of your slanted lines going off in the direction that the black lines are going. And really, those lines all need to match with these orange lines. So do you see how you did the bottom of the window? The windows? Kind of, they also have to line up on this orange line. So you can see the black lines are where you put them, but the orange line is where they need to be. And this in particular, you have this kind of sticking out like this. It really should be coming down like that. Yeah, I'm not sure what that top one is you're referring to in the top one. I can't see the picture beneath it. Well, you have done this. On that double line that looks like a, the top of the... A bunch of lines going this way on the top, going like this, going almost straight down like that. They also, these lines also need to go down to the vanishing point. So this is where you have drawn them the black lines, mm -hmm. and this is where the orange lines are actually the direction they need to be going. Okay. Got it? You see how I guess. it's hard for me to put words on it, but uh, you need to erase. You have these three lines that are going like this, but really those they should lines, go. lines they should. go up and down and down and down. Okay. Yeah. We work on that. Yeah, yeah. And I get, and it's the same with this. You have these sort of your windows kind of floating, but really, it's a, it's a, the angle is less, more great. It's you know, it's along this angle. Okay. But they need to end. Uh, everything else looks pretty good though. Okay. So good job. Thank you. Um, once you get in here to this part. It'll be fun to kind of like add in this tree, right? Which is in this alley, which I think is really why I ultimately had you guys do this one. I think it's nice to have kind of an organic structure kind of versus a non-organic structure. Yeah, I really need to be better. I need to learn how to be better with editing, but I didn't even know how to begin to stick that <laughs> on. You can teach an old dog new tricks to some extent. <laughs> I'm adding little bits of brick here, not too much, because I think we're going to do a lot with paint. I have a gate here. I have a gate here. Gates are kind of lighter, will be lighter. Uh, yeah, it is really true. Um, yeah, I mean, you know, Sandra, this sort of going back to this question, I'm just thinking about it. To me, it seems like you just can't do a painting without strong lights and darks. I mean, it I mean uh, it's, it's like, I mean, they have to be there. I mean, in this case, it's very stark contrast. And when I first looked at the photos, I preferred the other one. But the, the guy who owns the cat told me that he preferred that light one. And instantly, I thought of Yulia. I, thought, I said, yeah, yeah. my teacher. Yeah, yeah, one. yeah. This is the way it is. Yeah, this, because this creates a dynamic, right? There's a very clear, there's no question about the lighter darks of the source. 
I mean, you can do it. You could probably do either one, but the one that's going to be the most dynamic painting is where the light does the work for you. And that is, an, I mean, it's interesting, Sandra, because no one's ever really asked me that question before. I've just always assumed everyone knows this. This is the way it is. And I have to think about it. I'm just thinking about why that's true. And I think Jessica's really right. It's well, actually, I think the reason Sandra is asking it is because she's coming from a more advanced mindset rather than looking at it from a subject matter. Sandra, you're starting to think about things uh, in really the terms of what makes a good painting. And that's yeah. really awesome. Like, congrats. Yeah. Like, that's the mindset that you start once you have enough work under you and you're learning and you're practicing and you're growing that's exactly the type of question you would ask like why is this a good painting what makes this a good painting we know the subject matter is good right. but what about it makes a good painting right you could do a good job with either one of them there's enough backlight like you could have like a really cool like backlit highlight on that first photograph which would make a cool painting like you could totally do it it would be fine it would be great but that second one is at a little bit of a higher level because now you're playing not only with the subject matter, but you're playing with the shapes of lights and darks it's and the composition in lights and darks rather than just a subject matter. It's, it's very dynamic. advanced. It's dynamic, right? It's mm -hmm. dynamic. Yeah. There is an implied yeah. movement, even mm -hmm. though the subject is still and you've captured That's right moment it's dynamic so you can see the turn you can feel it so those kind of things are like uh they convey a lot to us movement on a flat like so strong contrast and oftentimes and i might even encourage you guys to do this here um as we get to the cityscape sketched in oftentimes pushing the contrast beyond what is actually existing is also helpful it looks right. like and a lot of painters will do that. They'll push, uh, you know where this happens a lot, Sandra, in animal paintings, you'll see this happen with crow paintings. So if you look crows? at a, crows, because crows are black, right? They have a lot of black and you will see, I have tried to draw crows and found that paint and actually found them really challenging. And one of the things that I noticed when I started looking at what other people were doing is they were pushing the light dark contrast even more than where when it exists when you're actually looking at a crow. And that helps. That's you. true for black fur and white yeah. fur. It's true Both. for black and white fur. Black fur and white fur. Oh, Diana, that came out so- Or feathers. That came out so nice. I just have one suggestion. Yeah. Um, this edge needs to be looked at and nuanced a little bit more. This dark edge here needs yeah. to be a little higher. And you don't think I should work more on the water in the background? And no, no. You might want to glaze it this pinky color. You might want to do a little pinky glaze over the top. But no, the real issue, the only issue I see is in this shape is not right. Yeah, the strange shape there, yeah. So work on where that edge is and, um, and then you've got it. I think it's done. It's lovely. Absolutely lovely. All right, as far as everybody else is coming along, how's it going? Um, so here's a great opportunity to simplify. What did Jean, Jean said something the other day to me in class about how like, can I just decide to simplify, not do this extra thing because it's a pain and I was like, first I was like, no. And then I thought, you know, actually that's not a bad way to discuss simplifying, right? We partly we simplify because it is a pain in the neck. Here's my drawing so you can kind of see where we're at. And you guys take as long as you need to to get to this point, however, where you're the happiest. I'm actually getting a feeling these are gonna make some really amazing paintings. I'm a little bit excited about what you guys are gonna pick. <laughs> now I'm like, what are they gonna pick? What colors are they gonna pick? <laughs> I mean, I will give you some, some suggestions, but I'm gonna give you a lot of leeway here.
Great work. No, it's funny. I only had the picture on my cell phone doing the boat. So now that I blow it up, I see what you're saying. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. You have it kind of like floating. I can't remember without looking at the source, but you have it kind of floating in the wrong direction. And shape is the top of the shape is it's really it's more like how this back edge comes into the top shape. Yeah, yeah. Other than that, it's beautiful, and I wouldn't do anything except maybe a couple glazes, pink glazes on the back to you know lightly bring those pinks. In. Um, if you want to see this, I'm going to show you this up front. I was just looking at cityscapes, uh, different people who did cityscapes. Uh, this is a friend of mine in Portland named Dennis Anderson, who's a really good cityscape painter. Can you see how these lines and, and Sandra talk about light and dark? Look at how he uses light and dark. To can you make it, can you put it closer to the, to the camera? Because we can't see. Uh, now I see better. Thank you, thank you. See how yes. strong the shadows and the light are? So those yes. who are working on the perspective, look how that's happening, right? But also look at those beautiful light and dark shadows and how much drama, look at the light and dark of the car. Look at the shadows on the shadows of, the, ah, damn it. <laughs> the shadows on the, on the cement are as much um, a part of the subject as the subject is. It's as beautiful what, as the subject is. What's the Instagram name? His name is uh, A. Dennis Paints. Hold on. Uh, he's really good. Uh, Spell that? A. D. Let me find it instead of trying to remember it. So I just lost it. Uh, a. a. Dennis. Oh, Dennis. A. Dennis Paints. Got it. Yep, Dennis Anderson. Oh yeah, his stuff. Oh, Dennis really Anderson. Good. Yeah. Yeah, you know yep, him. Yep, 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 yep. He's great. Yeah, I he's really good. I'm always watching him. His paintings are really rich. And mm -hmm. oh yeah, yeah, he's Dennis super good. Is he plain air? Is this studio know. work or plain air? I think he's mostly studio. I think this is studio work. It looks a little bit too refined for plain air. Yep, exactly. I mean, I freaking know this spot. This is in, I know like there, I know what that is. I love, anyway, he just really does these very dynamic cityscapes and always there's some kind of shadow and light at play. Shadow and light mm -hmm. very much sort of, um, well, sort of play a role in his work. I think his work is really great. I love it. I like it too. Yeah, no, he's a studio painter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's a, he is really good. He is really good. Yep, yep, yep. 
he's good. I think he used to train at the Art Students League of New York, or maybe he taught in New York. I don't know. But <laughs> he's got Blick in one of his. Oh, this is fantastic. Good yeah, job, right, man. Isn't he? You good? see this? And his colors are very like light and bright. So he's got a lot of pastel. He doesn't use the same color palette that I do or that you do, but he definitely really pushes and pulls that light and dark. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm gonna put a few more names in the chat for you. Uh, yeah, everybody. So and stuff. Mm -hmm. Oh, so good. So many great paintings. You know, it's funny. And I, this is not to diminish it at all. There's no end to the talented painters you will find in the world. There's millions of them. There's so uh -huh. many talented painters that like, you can't count them. And it's really fun to keep finding them, more and more of them as you go on. It's not like it's this little few. There are as many good painters as there are good teachers. And- Probably more actually. Need it. Yeah. Teaching is a separate skill. And they're as needed, and they're as needed. There's so many good painters. And it's funny, when you look at each one, you're like, each one brings their own sense of whatever, but there's a, there's a lot, <laughs> so many. I'm putting one more in. And I mean, and here's the thing. Those are just the ones that we can see. There's some 11 year old out there who's really like knocking it out of the park. There's a bunch of 11 year olds out there really knocking out of the park. There's that is true, but they're digital. Yes, there's a bunch no, of- No, there's an 11 year old in Idaho that's not digital, right, Leah? Oh. That moved there, Idaho? <laughs> I'm going. <laughs> Who are he's they? gonna be what's great one name? day he's a former there, what's student. their name he's you wouldn't know him you wouldn't know him he's a former student he actually seems to have lost interest we haven't seen him in class in a couple of years uh hmm. but yeah i think it got hard for him really <laughs> well, maybe he's moved on to digital i doubt it I think does he it, have an instagram no He's just a kid. He really that is. Doesn't matter. They have. They all. They have Instagrams. My kid had an Instagram. Which you I don't think Colin has an Instagram. Okay. So, anyone heard what's happening with Reuters in Poland? No. What's no, happening? No. What? What's going on? But no, because uh, the Polish government in is uh, creating a law that makes it forbidden for foreign entities to own media in the country. What? Yeah, so there's a big, big things going on in Poland right now. Oh, um, I'm gonna have to ask Aga, my friend the, and the government Aga. is getting uh, more and more mm. fascist. Yeah, yeah, That's weird. Ooh. I don't see anything on the on Rogers traffic, so I suspect the traffic about this is going out on at a much higher level. Yeah, journalists, because it's. I just saw on CNN they interviewed the they interviewed Discovery's uh, CEO who is fighting it now. Well, yeah. hell, they have a big. There's a lot of writers people in. Well, yeah, because for us it's mm -hmm. not just. I mean. Poland was always a uh, place where it was like a so-called uh, cluster bureau. So it's a place where we sort of, um, it was the head place for cent uh, Central Europe, Eastern Europe. Right. But then they went further and uh, made it like a speed center, a bit like we've got in Bangalore as well uh, oh, for yeah. Europe. So it's actually, um, it's actually a place, it's actually not just a, Poland. It's not just a bureau. It's, it's, 
not just a Polish bureau, it's a regional center and beyond major that. Hub. It's a, yes. a major, a major hub, exactly. Because Olga just recently won a speed, didn't she just win a speed? Like the fastest yeah. journalist to turn around the most stories in a single day or something like that. Yeah, I yeah. And she's on vacation in France right now. Mm. Would like to vacation in France? What a life. Mm. Why am I here? In Provence, not just in France, in Provence. Oh. She's... Ooh. Excuse. I think in my yeah. next life I might come back as a French person because I think that's really nice. It depends on who they all are, right? I'm I don't of know. That sounds really nice. French food, Great lavender, wine, yes. Provence. I mean, uh, she had been actually uh, painting lavender fields, so I think that is what might have. Um, attracted her there. Maybe I need to be French. I'm Italian. That's kind of a little different, but close. That's French. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, is she traveling by herself? I don't oh, know. Actually. Meeting her folks or friends or something. No, what is this? Wow. Oh. That's great. My paint is running. Winning. So how did your puppy do in puppy class? Oh, she was fine. She gets so excited by the other dogs, though. <laughs> oh. See, she's getting so exciting, so excited. It was it was graduation day for puppy class, so she made it. Oh. Uh, so you're not going next week? No, next week it's I have to have private. I have to have a couple of private lessons to prepare her, so she can, so she's allowed to go to beginner's class. <laughs> <laughs> you mean she has to do some catch up? Yeah, she has to do do some calming. You know, I now I have managed to get her to go in the car now without barking at everything. So <laughs> that's taken till now, but. We've, we've passed that hurdle, but it's, it, but we have the biggest hurdle is that she's still nipping my husband. Whoops. Does he deserve it? Sorry. Maybe he needs to go to class with her. Yeah, I know, but that's not going to happen. Yeah, no, he, because he gets angry and that excites her even more. Right, right, right. <laughs> uh, that, that looks pretty good. Go ahead and add your tree in. Good corrections there. Thank you. Uh, Nina, let's see where we're at. So Nina, you did the same thing. You, you have your windows actually going up. Like I'm gonna draw the way you have your windows so you can see. You have the bottom of your windows here. You can see here's mine. You did this. Here, hold on. You did, you went the opposite direction. You went like this. That's how you drew the bottom of your windows. Your windows, can you see that? You did. Yeah, I see it. I, I used a ruler though. <laughs> it's, not about, it's not about rulers. It's no, about, okay. But I want you to, so I want you to really watch this. Okay, so it's not about a ruler. What it is about is understanding that if this is the horizon line, kind of where the windshield of the car meets, that yeah. everything above that horizon line slants down and everything below it slants up. Oh, so it slants down, okay. And you will never be able to see that because your mind is always gonna play trick, not you, one. Your mind's always going to play tricks on you on that one. So it slants down. Okay, because you, okay. Wow, okay. It's above the horizon line. There's the horizon line. Everything on the side, this is only true about stuff that's on the side. Right? The stuff that's coming out this way, this is straight horizontal. 
So a wall that's mm -hmm. this way, but anything that's on the side, which is the side of these buildings, right? That yeah. supports a single vanishing point. Okay, I'm gonna, I'm just correcting them now and then I'm gonna send them to you. But it makes sense because I see it once you tell me. <laughs> Listen, this is not something that I'm telling you. Perspective is something you've got to know because you can't see it. You can't see it no matter. Jessica's like, she's like, what am I going to say to add to this? <laughs> like, so what I am going to say to that is go outside on any street that has buildings on it. The horizon line is always at your eye level. That is a hard and fast rule. It never changes. The horizon line is your eye level. And if you go and you look, particularly at a brick building, because those are the easiest to see it, you will see, you'll see it. The, you'll see your eye level on the, the line in the bricks that goes straight, that's your eye level. And if you look for it, anything below that is gonna slant down and anything above it is gonna slant up. This is one point perspective. No, honey, um, you still haven't done it. <laughs> okay. Um, no. Okay. I'm going to show you how to do it. Okay. And I want. Oh, wow. You to okay. You have. Let to Leah it. show you how to do it, and then go outside and look at it in real life, and you're going to see that everything <laughs> Leah's telling you, it yeah. will click into place. And once you start seeing it, you can never ever unsee it, and you're going to look for it all the time, and it's going to get imprinted in your brain. And that is a good thing. Anyway, yeah, I'm waiting. Okay. I'm waiting for that day. Yes. <laughs> okay, you've done this. This is what you've done. That's what you've done. All right. This is not what you, that's not correct. This is how the line, this is how the bottom of the windows lines up. I start here at the vanishing point. Mm -hmm. And then I angle up. And my windows go to that line. Do you see? Oh, so my windows should be, they should go down even further. There, no, I want you to watch me. I am watching, okay. Yeah. Yeah. So that's not the way to think about it. The, I okay. think the problem here is that you can't personally relate to it yet. Yeah. And that's why I'm telling you to go outside, listen to everything Leah is telling you, and then go outside and look at it. Right. Um, it'll click in your brain. brain. It'll literally like, you'll have an aha moment. You're like, oh my God, I see it. But you've never looked for it before, which is why it's not clicking. Once you can personally relate to it, it'll make sense. I promise. But you. what Leah is telling you is solid. It's good. Listen to it. In this picture, here is the line for the bottom of the windows. Okay. Watch. See how I'm drawing at a slant yep. up to the vanishing point. Yeah. Here is the line for the top of the windows. Okay. Drawing to that vanishing point, that same yep. vanishing point. So this is where your windows end, and this is where your windows start. Yeah, okay. Windows, this is the bottom of your windows. And because yeah. the end of your window is above, because the bottom of your window is above the horizon line, which is right here, it's gonna slightly slant up. Yeah. So you're not trying to bring it down. Don't think to yourself, I'm bringing this down. The windows need to come down a little bit. You just need to draw the line so that you can put these two verticals in at the top and the bottom of your windows. Got it? Yeah, yeah. So don't try to tell yourself anything else because you'll overthink it, you will not. And then I agree. I want you to go outside and take a look at a building going away from you with bricks in it and take a photo of it and come back. Okay, I can't do that in my neighborhood, but um, sure, I will. At yeah. some point. Yeah. Okay. I do you have do buildings it. in your neighborhood? I do. I do. Okay. What are they made of? Uh, they're condominiums, right? So like windows. Okay. So they have windows. Like, so yeah. that's even better to relate to what Leah is saying. Go outside. Anything that is at your eye level, you're going to see a straight line and you'll only see it in one area. And anything that's below you, you'll see it. it it looks a certain way, whether that's the street, whether it's 
um, the bottom line of a building and anything that you're looking up at that's above your horizon, it's going to slant up exactly the way Leah said. So if there's not a brick building, don't worry about it. Then look at the windows instead. But you, I think for you, I think you have to relate to it personally from your own experience. And the only way to do that is to go look at it from life. So just go out on the street and each chance you get, it doesn't matter what kind of building it is. I want you to look at door frames. I want you to look at the bottom of buildings. I want you to look at the windows that are above you. If there are windows below you from a distance, look at that too, but find your eye level, which is the same as the horizon, and then look at it and look at those angles. And, the, and Leah's example right here is really, really good because she's got things that are below and she's got things that are above. So I want you, Pat, to look in your environment yeah, it's what's a, above yeah, your eye yeah, level and what's exactly. below it. But it, I think that you need to do that to relate to it in your own personal eye level experience. I think then it will make a lot more sense to you. I mean, I might send you out now just to go outside right in front of you, you know, in your, on your street and see what you could take a shot of a pic of the, of your street and I can show you. So if you were willing to go outside, stand in the middle of the street, take a shot, looking away from you, you know, looking down I the street. You can't stand in the middle of the street. It's Young Street. It's too busy. Oh, so on Young Street? Wow. Yeah. Yeah. yeah wait till we do this with color mixing. You think perspective is something. Wait till we do this with color mixing. It'll rock your world, friend. It'll rock your world. You will not be able to go down the street without mixing colors in your head. And once you get perspective in your head, you won't be able to walk down the street without analyzing the perspective. All the time. All the time, oh, constantly. That's great. That's great. Oh, no, I, no, I really appreciate it. And what I'm Leah hasn't quite told you is that once you start on your art journey and you be, you're becoming a painter or a, into drawing, it's not just when you're at your easel it's not just when you're in class it's literally all the time you won't be able to be anywhere without analyzing it as how would I paint this how would I draw it when it's raining you're going to look at the reflections of headlights and taillights and see how are they different on the street and how they are flashing from the cars it's constant it's going to take over your brain let it it's a good thing we're working on that anyway with her. Yeah, my brain is very. Her brain's resistant. <laughs> yeah, it's very. brain is resistant, but we're getting there. <laughs> I'm teasing. I'm telling you though, if you listen to Leah, because Leah does break it down very, very well, and she does break it down in a very relatable way. Listen to what Leah says, and then go out and look for yourself. And yeah. think about what Leah is telling you. You're going to see it. And once you see it like firsthand and it clicks in your own personal experience, I'm telling you, your brain is just going to have that flip flop. I'm gonna and it's, that's a good thing. Outside. That's a good thing. I can do it. With uh, I just don't see it. I just, I, I get, Leah's an amazing instructor, but for my brain, it's very hard. The uh, reason you have saying. a gap. No, it's okay. It's not, it's not anything Leah's saying or not saying. The reason you have a gap is because you're not looking for it in your own environment yet. You haven't, you have never maybe done that. You're looking at it from a photograph, which makes sense in the way Leah is laying it out. But once you start looking at it in your own environment, even in the room you're sitting in right now, you can see it. If you look, are you in a, you're in a room right now? Yeah. Mm -hmm. If you, if you stand up, look, look at the way the floor to the wall meets and look at the way the ceiling to the wall meets. If you have picture frames on your wall, you're gonna see it. What's above your eye level? What's below your eye level? Your couch might be below your eye level. Your chair might be below your eye level. You're gonna see these angles are different. If you have a picture frame that's above your eye level, it's gonna look different. Like you can do it right now. I think your gap is that you don't look for it in your immediate environment, which is totally normal. That's fine. Most people do not look in their immediate environment, but artists do. So if your brain, if your artist brain development is starting to happen, you're going to want to look for this stuff all the time in your immediate environment. If you're in your bathroom, like brushing your teeth, look at the perspective in your room. What's above you? What's below you? What do those angles look like? 
What does the angle from the ceiling to the wall look like above you? What does the floor angle from the wall to the floor look like? What is your eye level? Always ask yourself, what is my eye level? And it's different for different people because mine, I'm a really short person. I'm five feet tall. My horizon line is different than somebody who's five, five, just because I'm shorter. So look at that, analyze your environment. Everything Leah is telling you, you can apply to your own immediate environment. And that's actually really how you learn perspective because it becomes personally relatable. And I will shut up now. Actually, the bathroom tiles are perfect. They are perfect. They're they're yeah. even better than but brick. Explain what it you is. Have all your vertical. Look at yeah. In the bathroom okay. tiles. And then sure. I just went out to take a picture of my street to see if I could show you guys this. So I'm gonna quickly print it and see if I can show. You I think it. Leah, you can show people all you want. No, no, there's something, but you. But can people just... have to do it themselves to actually like make it click in their brain about the structure of yeah. perspective that's around them. I get it, but I'm just like gonna give an example. Yes, I think it helps if you have an example. Yeah, helps. I'd love to see that, Leah. So I'm gonna do it. So hang on, just hang right on here. This is why Leah is so cool. She'll like go outside for you guys. <laughs> it was hot out there too. Woo! I know, Leah, you're like, you're the, you're the best. Leah's the bomb, she really is. Uh, Jessica, I really appreciate the depth that you have, the depth of knowledge you have on this subject. You've given me a lot of language to, because you know so much about, uh, you've studied. I have to, because I do plain air, yeah. I don't have the luxury of time. I have to be able to analyze the perspective. And just to give you guys some perspective, like I'm really lazy. I want to like be really upfront about that. I'm like super lazy. Um, I'm also not a technical draftsman a woman because we're girls so we're awesome but you need to know how perspective works and if you don't know how perspective works your stuff's going to look wonky yeah. um and i am not like a stickler for exactness i don't need to be i'm not an architect and i'm not like doing like super tight building rendering i had in lincoln center yesterday i had two hours because i knew it was going to thunderstorm i had two maybe two and a half hours to I actually did it in two hours to like get and it's buildings if you know the basics of how things work you're going to be fine you don't need to do it super in depth you don't need to be mathematical about it you don't need to be even super exact you need to know your eye level you need to know what's above you you need to know what's below you you need to analyze it and once you can do that you can do anything it's not as hard as people think it is so there are a couple of things. I live in kind of a, uh, you know, in Portland, we don't have lots of big buildings. So I live on a street with a lot of single family homes. Um, but you can see the street and you can also see the end of the street and you can also see uh, things like telephone poles, which also show this. Oh, those are perfect. Telephone poles are like perfect. That's classic. Right? Classic perspective example is telephone poles and fences. Mm -hmm. yeah. Hold on. And uh, those of you who are still drawing, like uh, I'm ready to, well, we'll wait in a little while. I think I finished my bulb. I think it was pretty much done. So let's see it. Asante, I, I did a couple of more fixes afterwards, but they are minor. All right. All right. Let's see here. Hang on. So. Lovely I love that you have paint all over you, Leah. You're my kind of girl. That's kind of sad. <laughs> no, it's not sad. It's awesome. Let's go. Where's right. your dress you usually have on with all the paint? Oh, that's actually got so many holes in it that like, I can't <laughs> actually decently wear it anymore. <laughs> all right. So here's an example. oily rag. It's an oily rag now, Leah. If it's too yeah. holy to wear, it's an oily rag. It's an oily rag, that's right. Mm -hmm. So here it is. I just went out and took a picture of my street. So there's my street. We don't wait. Have I can't. Oh, there it is. Is it like right here, right now? Like right here, right now. I just went out and took a picture of my street. So this is my home. That black and white? How'd you get that up there so fast? Yeah. 
I just went out there, took a picture, printed it. Oh, that's a, you know what? This is really, really good because look at the lines in the pavement. Do you see how they come to the horizon line, which is about, it's about actually almost halfway into the page is the horizon line. Uh, And those road lines are sloping up to the horizon line. And then you have those telephone poles that are sloping down. Yep, 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 yep. And on the curb. This is so good. That's a great example, Leah. That's what I thought. So here I just stood in the middle of my street. It's a quieter street. It's a quiet street. So so does everybody get that uh, what I did to find the vanishing point was to take the road that's closest to me and and find where it, the point meets in the middle, right? So this is the vanishing point. This is also the high level horizon. Look at the wood slats on that house. Yep. Hold on, we'll get there. Yeah. So this is the eye level horizon, which means mm-hmm. that everything, so, and, and, uh, and let's see, this is the front of a house. This is facing us. This is the side. This is facing us. This is the side. These are sides. So the telephone poles, Right, here's a really good, this is a constructed thing. They should be in fairly even rows. This is not a good ruler for this. So the telephone poles from the center line, I don't think they're quite even actually, right? Technically, this guy is like rising up a little bit higher. So he, it must not, they must not be exactly the same height. But if you see the top or the land is sloped, there could be a hill or a valley in the land. Yeah, yeah, a little bit of a slope trick. But essentially, the telephone poles are contained within the horizon line here and this top line. This one comes a little bit above, but the rest of them are here. See that? So the telephone poles are coming up over the horizon line, which means that the diagonal line goes to the same single vanishing point. Yeah, even these these things, these cracks kind of go towards a single vanishing point. Yep. The cracks really give this a sense of depth. Otherwise, it would look flat. My cracks are even going mm-hmm. to a set, to a single vanishing point. Um, the side of this house, which is here, right? The side that's going away that is above the horizon line. So the angle of the top of the house will, if I line it up with the top of the house and go to the single vanishing point, that will be the angle. Same with the angle, keeping my, let's do this, keeping my ruler at the same point, the single vanishing point, if I wanna find out what this angle is, I stay at the vanishing point, I just come down, see? See? Leah, do the sidewalk. where the, the sidewalk meets the, the grass same as horizon, too. Leah? It meets at the no, line. no, meets- the vanishing points. So, in one point perspective, which is what we're working with, you have your horizon line, which is always just a straight line. The land meets the correct. Sky. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But it's also your eye level. That's your exact eye level on your pr- perspective of where you're. you're you're working from. Yes, it is also where the ground meets the sky. Any angle that is not a vertical, meaning up and down exactly. So if you see on the house where that the window frame is on the left side, those mm-hmm. are exact vertical lines, right? right? Any line that is not a vertical is always 
in one point perspective, one point, which is what we're dealing with here. All of the lines that are not vertical are always in relationship to the vanishing or the, um, the horizon line. Well, show it, me how that, show me how that telephone line going horizontally is hitting the, I don't see no that it's going to, to the vanishing line. Oh, is, is that you? Though. Is that you? It is printing something? It Oh, okay. Is. Because anything that's not a vertical in one point perspective is either going, so one point perspective means there's one vanishing point. Mm -hmm. So in Leah's example right here, it's right in the middle. Leah, can you just point it out really quickly, please? That's the vanishing point, which means every single line in this image that is not straight up and down vertical, like the telephone poles. Mm -hmm. Leah, can you draw a line on the side of the house on the left that where that window is? You see that big old window? No, one second, I'm just redrawing the horizon line. That's the okay. Point, so yep, that's perfect. So can you just show that vertical window of the, because the, that's on a plane that's parallel to us as, yep, right there. That is vertical. That's a complete vertical. Any line that's not a vertical is going to go towards the vanishing point. Meaning, if you're looking up, it's going to slope down. And if it's below your eye level, it's going to slope up. So we can see sloping down. Leah, that same house on the left, let's look at that window on the second floor. The top of the window on the second floor. Nope. Yeah, the bottom of the ruler. Look at the bottom of the ruler light right now. We're looking up at that window. It's above our eye level. It's sloping down to that vanishing point. Now, if we look at the curb, it's sloping up to the vanishing point because it's below our eye level. You see, yeah. everything that's not an up and down straight vertical is coming to that vanishing point. And that is a hard and fast rule. It's like the periodical table of elements. This is the artist version of the periodic table of elements it is a linear perspective. There are three kinds. There's one point, two point, and three point. We're working with one point. One point is the easiest and there's a hell of a lot you can do with it. But it is a hard and fast rule. If you learn it, you can make anything push back into space. So Pat, you see? I, I understand your question though. In single in single point perspective, which is what this is and what I gave you, the relationship of the vanishing point to the eye level horizon is the same. The vanishing point sits on the eye level horizon. Okay. Where these two lines meet of this road that's coming up here, where these two lines meet, right. is the eye level horizon. Now, in this particular case, we don't have um this is truncated right we don't right. have a, a sky and so and this car is actually kind of and because this is such a short road i determined the eye level horizon by actually lining up this line and the other side of the road and i look and i look to see where they met Right. So this is the vanishing point. And then there is the, and then I know that right here is the eye level horizon, which is kind of at the roof of the car, at where the, where the top window, the bottom window of the car is. So right. that's how I determine that. But normally, you know, you can see it in the bricks too. And also in the, in the parking garage kind of, mm -hmm. I don't know what that thing is called. If you look on the left side of the drawing, you can see where the bricks start sloping up and down and you can see where they make a straight line. And the same thing for that grill or gray, I don't know what the heck it's called on the right side. Yep. Um, you can see the same thing. Like they slope up, sometimes it's subtle. And, but if you see at the top, it's, there's a definite difference than the bottom. Like yeah. you can, you can see it in this drawing or in this photo. It's really I obvious. I see it in the brick on the left. Yeah, I see that. Yep. Leah, the show them on that the right side. Up. Show yeah. them on that. What well, I don't know what you call those doors, but on that right side. Sh yep. Show them. What do you call yeah. those doors? I mean, they're, what do you call them? it's a garage door. It's just a sliding garage door. 
Yeah, show show on the sliding garage door because it's really, really easy to see. And if you have it in one place, you have it everywhere. And the bricks correspond to the garage door. Yep. So you see how I've got, here is the vanishing point. And you see how as I'm at the bottom below, the angle is uh, steep. And as I go up, the angle slowly, 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 mm -hmm. slowly mm -hmm. starts to flatten. Now, interestingly, Jessica, in this picture, that they never, the lines never completely flatten, which is why I knew there's a skew happening in the photograph. It's yeah, like, that's just distortion. But you correct that as an artist, you just exactly. know it, and you correct for it, which is exactly what you said at the very beginning of this session, you yeah. said there's distortion and we're going to correct for it. Mm -hmm. So as an artist, we need to be able to analyze the scene and correct for it because photography, as wonderful as it is, and as much of an art form as it is, it's not painting, it's not drawing, and there is distortion that happens. And that's why Leah said earlier in the class, there's distortion and we're going to correct it. Yeah. You have to know how to look at it from a real life artist perspective. And then you'll be able to deal with any photograph so and know that, that there's distortion. Does that explain what's going on guys a bit? Does that help yeah, you? I just saw that in, you know, the grill that looks like chain coming down, the one to its right. I had completely drawn those lines like they were coming down. And then oh, yeah. you know, all of a sudden I realized they eventually straighten out completely. And then they mm -hmm. go down. And they go down. You know, the sort of bad news, there's good news and bad news here. The bad news is that none of these angled lines are the same. Each one it's is true than the last. But if it's you know true. to line up, when you're working with the 2Ds, if you know to line up your ruler edge with the vanishing point, to identify the vanishing point on the horizon, on the, on the eye level horizon, and then you move up, you know you're going to be able to draw those in correctly because I'm notice I'm just holding it here and I'm just moving up. Right? So this will give me the angle I need. And I know I'm going up because I'm above the horizon line. Believe me, you guys, this is a repeated, if you don't get it, uh, it's okay, we're gonna continue to hammer this in, as Sandra says, until we get it. <laughs> but please, please, oh, please it. look for it in your daily lives. Even in the grocery <laughs> store aisle, you're gonna see it. Go to the cereal aisle, because those are flat boxes. Go to the cereal aisle in the grocery store and look for it. Because nice. there's stuff below you, there's stuff above you. That's why I'm telling you, like your artist brain, once it switches on, it's like they're all the time everywhere. And you just can't escape it. Go anywhere and look for it. You'll see it. And then the last, so last thing, Julia, I love your sketch. I love where it is. Pat, I, I'd say you guys are there too. So okay. in these dark and light shadow areas, going back to Sandra's original question, Sandra did not know she was asking the $1 million money question. <laughs> is going to come into play, which is naturally occurring to her as she does more art, right? Yes. So get your um, lights and your kind of major darks um, on the street lined up, and then we are ready to start painting. Isn't that exciting? Isn't that exciting? And then at this point, we're going to go. So Nina, just keep working. Yeah, there we go. Let's see. Yeah. Yeah. That's it. Yeah, I did That's it too high. Yeah, I did it too high. So no, everything you both are saying makes sense because we've done this before, but it, it is true. It's going to be hard looking out. I, in, in, I'm in Canada and I've not gone out very much. So I'm not going to the grocery store and stuff still. So mm -hmm. I, it's okay. Yeah. Do you have a road in front of your house? No. Um, yeah. Look at the bathroom kind of. Even if it's a dirt road, it doesn't matter what kind of road. Do you, do you have any kind of road or straight path around you? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah so you I, can do it. It's fine. You can do it. Okay. Same thing. Yeah. All right. So take it's a fine. look. Nina, the only Where in Canada are you? I'm Toronto. in Toronto. 
Toronto. She's like, no. Okay. Oh, that's a nice city. Toronto's a nice city. It doesn't matter. You can be rural. You can be urban. You can have a dirt road. You can have a highway. It doesn't matter. You can go outside and you can see this in action. So if my examples do not apply to you, that's fine. You still have it because you still, if you have any kind of road, any kind of straight path, go stand in the middle of it where there's no traffic and you'll be safe. That's fine. <laughs> not a highway, <laughs> not a highway. Don't Please don't stand in front of a highway. You're going to see it. You're going to see it. Yeah. If you live on a farm, you're still going to see it. Right. But I feel like this is a hard and fast rule. I feel Anywhere like you are, it applies. I feel like we've gotten somewhere with this. Um, Nina, Good. the thing I would, only thing I would say, this looks much better. What I would say is you want to expand out this area if you want to fit your car in there. So okay. Car, see, right? You need to make this a little bit wide. You need to make it a little bit wider on this side. You have your lines kind of coming up like that. So just yeah. go wider, <sighs> draw a straight line down and make that little back section wider. And then okay. uh, Pat and uh, Pat and um, uh, Julia, I think we're ready to paint. Are you ready to paint? Are you ready? After all of this tea. I'm done. ready. All right. <laughs> so are you, Pat, you're using oil, right? Yes. Okay, and Julia, you're using acrylic, right? I gotta set up my, my uh, yeah. Demonstrate in oil what I'd like you to do. Um, and then you guys are gonna start having some, um, you're gonna get to start playing around with values and color. Uh, before we go any further, I wanna show you one of my latest paintings. It's little, so I should be able to just put it up straight there. Oh, hold on. So, Here is a recent cityscape that I did. Oh, nice. that's cool. I love that green. Oh, wow. Right? Now, oh, it's the light is lovely. Obvious, right? These are obviously not. And Sandra, talk about bringing up the most appropriate thing, right? Look at the drama. Yeah, that's exactly. right? yep. So obviously, this is not the colors of the city street, correct? Right. Not the colors that are actually existing in the city. I just chose colors and uh, I'm really digging the purple green combination right now. And then there's bits of pink and orange and blue in here, but it's mostly purples. Um, obviously there's a red bait. I'll show you about that in a second. So what I'm gonna encourage you to do, notice that what's really working here is my strong lights. I have a very strong, my, my, my greens and yellows really read as light compared to my purples and my pinks and my blues, right? The, blue, the purples are reading as generally darker and this is reading as lighter. So you guys are gonna, once we get our base down, I'm gonna have you work in one color for the base, but once we get the base down, you're gonna start picking what value what colors you want to make everything the challenge is to stick with the values because i found this um the the color version not very interesting so if you would like to try and follow it you're welcome to i'm not going to stop you but i'm giving you permission to make a hot pink city if you want to make a hot hot pink city you can make a fucking hot pink city you can make a hot pink, pink city you can make an orange city you can make a gray city you can make a blue city um the key here is to pay attention to values. So for those of you working in, for Julia, you're gonna have water. Yep. And um, you know what, I think we're gonna need a pretty big brush. I'm actually using a one inch brush for my base. I'm using a brush that's this big. This is like, I just want you to see how big this is. I want you guys to get the biggest brush you can. If, it, if you don't have a flat like this, it doesn't really matter, but it's helpful to have it. Um, and Julia, you're gonna be using water to wet your brush uh, and laying your paint down thusly. Hold on. Thusly, you wipe that, thusly. Um, Pat, you're of course gonna be using Damsol. Right. 
to lay your paint down. And by the way, Pat, I really want to credit you. That geode that you finished last week was really awesome. You did good. Thank you. And we may work on it a little bit this time if you want to. So okay. So if you're using this is my this is my damsel or turpentine little thing here. Turpentine is like a paint thinner. So if you are using oil, um, your first layer you want to do in turpentine because it'll dry really quickly, a little bit like acrylic. Uh, for those of you who are using water, you're going to just do thin layers. Your first um, painting is going to be a thin layer, but here I am. I'm putting a little bit more damsel in there, so I've got it. And then I'd like you to take out the color. What color am I going to use, you guys? <laughs> you probably... Sienna. Sienna, yeah. <laughs> because nothing is wrong if it hasn't been done with burnt sienna. So burnt sienna, so I have a little bit of burnt sienna here, whether it's oil or color doesn't really matter. Get my brush wet, my big brush, with the brush as quick as I can. So I've got kind of, see how it's dripping? Oh, so pretty, look at that color. And I'm gonna go into the darkest areas of my painting so we get even okay that it drips. Awesome that it drips. And I'm going to darken the darkest area. I'm going to paint the darkest areas of my painting first. I just move to up here. This is like, I might go to a smaller brush just because this is a fairly small thing, but. Let's see. So you see, and I'm kind of moving around. And I'm not really worried about detail. I'm more worried about kind of a basic value. Wash. I think my window's kind of dark. This is dark too. Oh, no, that's later. A little bit lighter. This just must be looking horrific right now. Don't freak out. <laughs> no, it's bad. The bottom of my car is fairly dark. Not everything on the car, but the bottom of the car. This is dark. There's dark. And like this shadow of the street is fairly dark. Get darker, I might use a little bit more paint, but I want to be careful, particularly oil. Um, I know this area is quite light compared to, and then I'm going to use just a little bit more to get my mediums. I'm going to use a little bit more watered down version to so see how this is dark and this is kind of a medium. It's a little bit darker. Don't worry about being exact. This is kind of, I mean, technically I could have you tone the whole thing, but I want you to get used to the idea of identifying your lights and darks. You're right, this is really central to everything I teach, Sandra. Thank you for noticing. I appreciate that. <laughs> Even more than I know myself. <laughs> this is very central to the teaching for me because if you can't, you, you want to sort of train yourself to see these darks and know they're there. There you go. Um, I don't know about you. I kind of love the painting at this point. I know lots of people don't like it, but I find this sort of messy, drippy beginning really neat. And if you, um, you can use either a rag or a paper towel, there's a little light area here I'd like to pull out. So obviously I can just kind of come back in here and pull out that little light area, right? I kind of went right over it. And I was doing my darks. My windows are kind of hard. Cut up about this. And then we've got a kind of medium going over the rest of it. Not the rest of it, sorry, the medium parts. So notice I'm kind of skipping the later parts. A 
Taurus and Leo. Um, notice I'm also kind of skipping the tree, moving around the tree right now. And I'm also skipping this area, which has this kind of cool fence and post in the key. So I'm gonna take a picture of this at this point here. Hold on, I'm gonna darken in a couple of areas. I am not worried in any way about being perfect here. Because I know I can fix this later. So I am not worried. I'm just kind of wanting to identify some darks. I'm going back in and darkening in a couple places where things are like kind of super dark. Um, but notice I'm kind of leaving out. So I wanted to show you this. I'll take a picture of it. So painting, why do we do this? Painting is about layers. If you'll notice how flat these first colors look, right? This first layer of color, we can still see the white. So this color, even though we may not, we may cover it up, put it up, it's gonna influence and help us, like paintings become brighter the more layers you put. Sorry, it's a little bit too bent here. There we go. So here's how it is. And I'm using a thick brush, which is really hard to control. And that's awesome. You don't want to get too anal. People think that like this little teeny brush like this is how you want to start your painting, right? But this is an exercise in frustration. You don't really want to go here. You want to get sort of splashes of light and dark color so that you can see where everything is. And then I'm going to dip my brush in either water or Gamsol to make it super light. And notice how I'm kind of, oops, here, you can't really see this. I'm sort of pulling a really light layer off. I'm going to lightly, I have a lot of pencil on here, so it's looking grayer than I would like. And I'm going to very lightly kind of that paint on all the light to medium areas. I mean, it really is a mess, but it's a pretty kind of mess. And notice how thin this is. So if you're using oil, right, you want to have a thin layer so that it'll dry quickly and you can layer. This should dry in a few minutes, maybe 10, 20. On a day like today, it should dry pretty fast. Uh, your acrylic will dry, you know, in a couple minutes. Um, and don't worry, unlike watercolor or ink, we do not have to worry about getting too light on our first layer. Our first layer, we can get darker, and then we can layer lights on top. So don't worry about getting too light or losing your lights. It's impossible. See, Julia, so much easier than um, watercolor. Or gouache or ink, which you're about to, I'm about to go in with some of you. It's really significantly easier. I'm kind of coming back in here and darkening a couple places. And I'm, I'm letting my brush be loose and rough. I'm letting my brush marks be kind of clumsy. That is the only way to really describe this, clumsy. But it's not clumsy, it's by design. I'm not clumsy. I meant to do that. <laughs> It's like when your cat like falls off the table and is like, whoa, no, I didn't, whatever. <laughs> right? So that's really the length of the first layer. So you can see how important the drawing is. I can see the drawing right through this. And in this painting like this, it's pretty important to have a drawing. Uh, you can get to the point where you learn to draw with paint. 
but um, we're all still in that beginning stage of learning perspective. So let's not put the cart before the horse. Oh, fuck. Damn it. <laughs> and I just put my oil brush in my watercolor jar. Hold on. Because I'm so used to reaching for my water brushes, which are on the right side, I automatically dipped my oil brush into my water with my watercolor brushes. You do not want to mix those two. So I just yank them out and wash them and hopefully they'll be okay. So go ahead and send it when you're either through with your drawing or if you're working on something else, send it over. Or if you have another question, which we can expound upon for uh, for long after you're, you're ready to hear about it, <laughs> let us let us teach you. <laughs> I'll amuse you. I send you what I'm doing. Let's see. Thank you. Uh, you can well, maybe you can figure out what it that is what it is, but it's. Let's see. It's really, really just the start of something. Why am I not seeing it? Because I haven't sent it. I ah, haven't. okay, great, great, great. All right, that was the pre pre preface. Oh, uh, nice fixes on the boat, Diana. It's beautiful. Thank you. And I like the little pinks that you got up in there in the blue. I think that solved everything that you needed. So you see, Diana does this really well. Um, these this selection of colors that's not necessarily the colors on the boat. So here you can see she's uh, very attuned to color and value. So she's got some pinks in here and some greens and a little bit of blue peeking through. And then this kind of slightly darker blue. Um, uh, and that really works. So she's pushing the contrast. This was much lighter in the photo. I've got the photo. I can actually show you guys the photo. Yeah, it was much lighter. It was much lighter. She pushed it darker because it supported the painting. And I'll show you what I mean by that. Um, what did we do that? We did that on Friday. Yeah. So this was a watercolor. Most people did this in watercolor. Let me find But it was perfect for watercolor. It is really perfect for watercolor, yeah. but um, you know she made some interesting decisions that I think really support the painting. Um, hang on, I'm getting there. It's here. Dang it! Here it is. Okay, so here's the source for that piece. So you can see that the colors she picked aren't really there, but look at what that dark really did to her boat. The darker blue really pushed in the back, really pushed the uh, boat forward. It, it was effective. So at some point you're always, if you're being smart, you're, the photo is just the beginning, then you're totally, you're playing with elements consciously to push value. Diana's portrait was a, I mean, picture was a portrait. Yeah, that's what I was starting now. Yeah. Oh, that's what she's starting now. But I'm looking at her boat picture, which she posted. Oh, okay. It's beautiful. I love it. Ah, Julia, that's looking great. That's looking great. Pat, looking great. Get even more, get your lights and get your kind of lighter wash in here. I know it looks like I don't have anything in here, but I do. Uh, okay. Is hubby, is that the portrait he just posted on Facebook, Diana? Frank, is that? Yeah, it's, yeah, it's going to be that. I thought so. It's so bad. It's such a bad picture. I don't know why he put that up, but I think he I, felt like this is me now. No filter, yeah. just me. Yeah. 
Well, you don't have to distort yourself. But, but it's an interesting. I'll punish you. I'll punish him by doing the portrait of him like that. There you go. <laughs> but that was that was great to see where it came from. So Pat, here I'll pull down uh, Diana's boat picture. Sure. You can see how she changed it. Uh, hold on. Oh, I found it in the in the. Uh... I'll just put it up close. So you can see them right next to each other. So look at them right next to each other. Then you can really see the decisions that she made consciously to change value and contrast, and how they really helped. Oh yeah. Uh, Sandra, you are starting to make some of those decisions when you're when you're trying to figure out what to do with your backgrounds. I feel like you're beginning to explore that idea. Oh, she's on the phone. But uh, that pinkish really was well, really a great idea. And I think the darker blue works too. Yeah. Okay, so now that you're done, I want uh, Julia. I'd like you to put three colors on your palette. We'll start with three colors that you think represent light, medium, and dark. And so let's see. If I were to show you how to do this, I'm going to do red. And you can mix if you want to. You can use like straight colors from the tube. Um, let's see here. I'm going to put. Here, I'm going to play around and then I'll show you. I'll do my big reveal. And I am very into purple right now. So let's... All right, Jessica, Leah, I'm sending a picture of the back. Because I'm not on Young Young, but when I look at this picture, yeah, right. I, I said it in the WhatsApp thread, right? I look at the horizon line in the back of the middle building. It's behind mm -hmm. it, uh huh. Let's right, see. and then I can see the angles going down. All right, excellent, excellent. Like I do get that. I think it's because <laughs> then I get lost when I'm trying to put the lines in. I think, but I think that's practicing. You got it. Oh, look at that. What a that's actually kind of an epic picture. When you get lost, which happens to everybody, ask yourself, is it above my eye level horizon or below? Right. And, and the then you'll find your place again. That's all you have to do. And then you find your place. Everybody gets lost. It's easy to get lost. Looks, I get lost like all the time. It looks Seriously. Funny. It looks That's to me the like question to ask. Is about right here. Oh, so it's above the tree line. It's not below. No, it's not here. Okay. That's oh. because from the angle of this photograph, yeah, you're not on the ground floor. You're above. Yeah, yeah. you're looking down. Yeah, that's why. That's why. So it looks like it's about here, and the reason I'm guessing that is I'm seeing where the lines are the straightest on the sides of the buildings. And I'm also kind of following these lines up. Yep. So it's almost, it's basically about here where the tree line starts in the center of that building, which means I agree with that. I agree. Okay. With that. Like okay. This, and everything above that line will start to go like that. That's excellent. You can tell in this photo on the right side, if you need a good point of reference, mm -hmm. you see on the right side there's like high contrast with those windows like the stripey looking part yeah. i know that's a terrible term that's what i would use as a reference so it's kind of yeah like right above like right where the trees are right it's about are. where the eye level is yep and that is because you're looking down yeah that is because you're not on the street correct okay. so you're looking correct. Down, like you're looking across but you're higher up so yeah it, but but it's interesting we can still see so you're looking down rather than up which which can be a little mind bending so don't get too into it but i think you saw it so that's great if anybody else wants to go outside and take a picture of what their street looks like we will analyze the the question <laughs> point for you and it's kind of cool to see where you live and by the way nina did you take that photo yeah i did 
that's a great photo. It oh, is. Thanks. It it's is a, it's a very good photo. Epic photo, and I might have you paint that at some point. Uh, my idea after we did one or two together was that I would have you guys photograph your neighborhood and have you paint it. So, um, so I think we might that might, that's a contender for sure. All right, let me show you what I'm doing over here because here's my palette paper. All right, here we go. So I mix a purple for my dark and I have yellow for my light and I've got a red for my medium. And I have them next to each other to see are they really working. I definitely think my purple is working. I might have to add a, a touch of a lighter. I might add a little white to my yellow to make it just a touch lighter. Uh, yellow is a funny color. It can be immediate. It's all related to, so I'm taking my palette knife to kind of mix it. There we go. Mm. Yellow is a funny color. It can be a medium. It can be a light. It can be a dark. It's, uh, it's all depends on what it's next to. People, we want to have this rule. Yellow is always light. Blue is always dark, blah, blah, blah. But we can't have that rule. That's not an effective color rule. Because there are light blues and dark blues. Right, so once I have my values, let's see, I'm trying, I'm gonna put this up a little bit. I want, to, I want you guys to be able to see the painting, but also the, cool. So tell me a, a rule that would help me pick the colors I wanna use. We have to put them next to each other and see how they look next to each other. Just one look, pick your dark and then, put a light next to it and see, does it look light? That's the so only- not, You're not asking us to mix to, to, with white to make it light. I, I mix with white to make this one light, but you don't have to. In the case of the painting I just showed you, my light is green. In this particular case, my light is yellow. My dark is blue. So I know. I know it's kind of stressful, but it's really freeing to think about color in this way, to start learning to uh, uh, apply. If you're really having trouble, um, take a photo of your three colors next to each other and turn it black and white. Then you will be able to tell whether your colors match the values. So if I do that, let me show you. I'm gonna do that with my palette here. So I've got my, my dark, my light, my medium. Oh, that's a really great painting. Really, really great painting. I'm going to take a photo of it. I'm going to take a photo of my palette. And then I'm going to turn my palette black and white. Leah, is that Zorn? No, I guess it is, kind of. <laughs> What's your yellow? I use cad yellow, medium, with a little oh. white in it. It is kind of Zorny. Ish. Ish. All right, there we go. Uh, so I'm going to show you what these three colors look like next to each other in value. So that's a good way to test it. But I want to push you to really, here, whoops. I want to push you to, um, to really play with color. So, so it's not easy for everyone to associate color with value. That is absolutely true. But if you do this exercise, and you take the picture, you'll see. So here's my black and white. And there, mm. color. So I think my black and white shows a pretty clear distinction. Um, yeah, Julia, I think that'll work. I think that'll work. I think that shows if you want to take it, turn this into a black and white and send it across just to see. Hey, Leah. What? You know, in your painting, you have a frowny face. I have a frowny face when I paint? In the painting itself, you see the square in the middle? No, in yours, in your drawing. In my drawing. 
You have a mustache and two eyes and a frowny face. Oh, oh, by the way, look, it's totally dry, by the way. Mine is completely dry. Thank you for showing me my frowny face. Yeah, you're welcome. I kind of like it. It actually looks like a pissed off Japanese dude. I love it. it. <laughs> frowny face. I love all I'm that. just point. So the reason I'm pointing it out is because it's a human thing, like an intrinsic human thing to look for faces and things. Um, and it's just something to like look out for in your artwork because I totally see a face in Leah's cityscape. <laughs> if you intend it, it's good. If you don't intend it, it's not good. I'm a, I think we can work on this as I get through into the details. <laughs> All right. And then the last thing I'm going to suggest that you do now, because I am working, Pat, I'm going to, I'm using this stuff that you're using, the sovereign free gel. And part of the reason I put it on my palette here, well, it's yeah. at an angle. Wait. So if you want to get your brush wet, give yourself a little bit of the solvent gel. Uh, Julia, you're just going to use water with your brush to get it wet. And at this point, I would highly recommend using a kind of thinner brush, but not so skinny. I'm going to use this one to start going in, and I'm going to add little bits of, so Pat, can you see here that I'm kind of dipping my brush a little bit in the solvent and then coming over into the paint? However, I still, I just have a lot of paint. I promise. I'll You're talking to Pat or Taz? because you're the only one doing oil. Oh. Today. So you're yeah. dipping it in the solvent to thin it? Just to wet it a little bit. And then I'm kind of going into my darker areas. And I'm, I'm putting in my darkest. Colors. Do my colors work? Let's see. Oh, actually, you didn't see the color. Huh. Let me take one more. That's pretty good, Julie. We can't even see your yellow. <laughs> That's right. Um, so Pat, I think that your medium is too close to your dark. If you look okay. at that, can you see that you can't really tell the difference very much? Yeah, okay. I want to lighten that medium with a little bit of yellow or a little bit of white. So I, I can use the same paint, just, just change the paint. You want to lighten Make it. it a little bit, yeah. Let me try. Let me try a different color instead first. I'm kind of spinning around. Oh no, that's way too dark. I tried Payne's gray, but it was. Look at how um, how nice. Even just adding little bits of dark. Actually, I'm really quickly deciding I don't like this. Um, no, I can see brush. that. Too. I don't have a control over this brush. Right. Yeah, get rid of it. Maybe, maybe it's not a brush. No, I want a smaller brush. I'm working pretty small, so I'm moving to a smaller brush. Hold on. Oh, yeah. I find myself uh, defaulting to these edgers a bit. You can see they've got kind of a slant. I like that. I've got two. I use them a lot. On a, on a painting this small, you kind of need it to be able to get it. But you see, I'm still not getting into too much detail. I really am just kind of putting in my darks. Uh, how's it going over there, Jessica? 
How's your guy coming along? Everything's good. I actually have to go though, because I have to poach a salmon and I want to show my daughter how to do it. Okay. Oh my God. Thank you for coming to class today. And thank you for helping so much. You're thank you for having class. And I'm sorry for being an obnoxious interrupter. I apologize. <laughs> you are not an obnoxious interrupter. <laughs> Thanks. You're helpful. You're very helpful. All right. So all right. You know, I love you all. You are all doing amazing. Leah, you're amazing. Everybody listen to Leah because she knows her shit. And um, I'll see you all soon. Bye, darling. See you soon. Bye, Jessica. Bye. 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 Thank you. Bye. Leah, I'm going to drop off in a few minutes, too. I have to go for dinner. <laughs> but oh, nice. Point I, this yeah, we've just kind of opened up in Toronto and it, it's just now it's going crazy I think so um yeah um I have family friends in from Boston so there's an outdoor dinner but um thank you so much for today I, I think I just have to try to it's not natural yet and I think it's just going to take a little bit more time but I think you're start. I'm noticing strides. I think you're making strides. YouTube path. These are complex comp. These are complex subjects, and you've got to grasp them as you can. You know what I'm saying? So you're doing good. It's it's uh, they're complicated. You often have to hear them a few times. Notice it's hard for us to describe them. It's it's hard for us to find the words to even tell you. So you're not alone in like kind of struggling with it. I think you're doing good is my point. Okay, no, that, I think that's the left side versus right side, right? I need it in words and I need instruction. Right side, yeah, we're just training up your right side. And you know what, Nina, you're like a million times better than you were at the very beginning. So feel really proud of that. You're starting to get it. And it can change your life in a way that's really pleasant for you. You're going to like it. It's going to help you in a lot of different ways to start thinking this way. Yeah, I'm enjoying all of this. Um, I like challenges, so this is fun. Yes. All right. Have fun going out to dinner. Enjoy, enjoy. Thank you. Nice seeing everyone. Nice Bye. See you. Bye. Good to see you. Oh, that works. There we go. So see how I'm starting to kind of layer in color. And also, look at notice how my second layer really uh, looks much more dr dramatic than my first. So now I'm gonna add in a little bit of color. If you're working, you know what, I'm gonna start by, if you're working in oil, you're gonna wanna clean your brush off. If you're working in acrylic, you're also gonna wanna clean your brush off, but you'll clean your brush off with turpentine, with Gamsol, and then squeeze out the extra Gamsol. Uh, so you don't have it kind of hanging off your brush. Um, and with, obviously with, oh yeah, there we go. Nice. Obviously with, um, uh, thank you. Sorry, I'm in right brain. It's hard for me to talk. <laughs> uh, as I'm laying down the pain, I'm like, what? <laughs> uh, you don't want extra extra turpentine kind of mixing in with everything else. So I'm not necessarily adding in all my paint. And I thought next week we might try kind of a looking up perspective. Just to challenge ourselves even more, but I'll still want you to sort of pick your own colors. And feel free to mix your colors. Notice here I'm kind of blending my medium up into my dark here. Oh, I can see them a little bit more dark. Oh, that's a Much 
I decide I don't like this color, I can change it when it dries. The thing about oil is it doesn't dry right away. So you'll have to, we'll layer things in. So Pat, at some point, if we still have a little time, I don't know how much time we've got left. But see how my painting is starting to kind of come together, even though it looks sort of loose. See how it's starting to come together. If we have a little time, we might mess around with our geodes a little bit more. Or just keep working on this. Yeah, I'm kind of into this now. It's neat, isn't it? have to to go soon. Diane, I'm so glad you're making time to be with us. I know how busy you are. Yeah, I'm super busy. Oh, but we're excited. Frank, Frank popped in his head saying how mean this was. Yeah. He loves everything you do. I see him. I'm friends with him on Facebook now. I see him brag about your work. It's cute. It's really okay. This he thought was mean. A little mean. All right. Well, that's where I'm at now, but it's going to get there. Oh, it's coming along though. Actually, and think about how much you struggled with the last portrait. And yeah. this is coming easier. Yeah. So whatever it is that is going on there, <laughs> maybe it's mean, but it might be just easier to see all the things. <laughs> it will be. It will be not be as mean when it's done, I hope. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I actually think it's looking pretty good. Tell him he posted it. Yes, I did. So Sandra, are you doing the cat or are you doing this? Yeah, here this is where I am. Wait, wait, wait. I have to change the view so I can see it. Uh, hold on. Hold it's on. Stay there. Hold on, hold on. Add spotlight. Oh yeah, that's kind of, oh that's looking great. Yeah. Oh, that's beautiful. You know it's already reading, Sandra, as as three dimensional, even though it's very loose. It's already reading that way because um, it's already reading that way because your values are you've got that those great values to work with. It doesn't look quite right, but. Uh... I haven't completely messed it up yet, so I'm hoping that as I continue, I think when I'm going to have to darken the shadows, I'm always amazed when I watch videos on Facebook, people who know what they're doing, and it's usually cityscapes, how dark the shadows are, and you think, oh, they're reading the pic picture, it's like way too dark, and it's perfect, right? and it's easy to read, and so... I'll um, get to you. So go darker than you think you need to. Dark is so yes, I'll have to go darker at some stage. Um, I'm not, um, but I'm going slowly because it scares me a bit. Right. I can see you during the week. Bye bye. And I'll see you. Bye, bye, Diana. See you soon. There you go. So here it is. Little painting is starting to come about here. It's looking kind of nice. Anyway, we're just getting started. Good work, everybody. Oh my gosh, we have like five minutes left in class. Can you believe that? <laughs> oh my God. Um, so uh, let's work for another five or 10 minutes. Then I'd like to see where you are. And then we'll make decisions about what we want to do. Right? We have, uh, we have um, yep, options in this class. Hmm. Well, I thought we had another hour and then I was like, no, we've gone for three hours. Does it feel like we went for three hours? Yeah. <laughs> hey guys, are you tired? <laughs> I'm pretty tired, yeah. I feel like I'm just, I'm just getting going. <laughs> Thank you. 
All right. Yeah, work for a little bit. I'm going to work for a bit longer. Hmm. Okay. Oh, here she is. Hi, Luca. Come on in and say hi. Come here. There she is. It's too high outside for her. Oh, Luca. Yes, I'm going to have her say enough dough. She's drinking first. Good girl. Yeah, I think I can let's see if I can add the spotlight and then switch the camera. 